If you have your Bibles, open with me to 1 Kings chapter 16, beginning with verse 30. Now Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. And it came to pass, as though it had been a trivial thing, for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam son of Nebat, he took his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians. And he, the king of Israel, went and served Baal and worshipped him. He set up an altar for Baal in the temple of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab made a wooden image, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings of Israel that were before him. Baal was an ancient Phoenician and Canaanite deity. This ancient carving is actually somebody's depiction of the horn god Baal and he's holding a lightning bolt in his hand and they believed him to be the god of rain, wind, lightning, and fertility. In the worship of Baal, it was one of the most evil heinous practices you can imagine. Temple prostitution, orgies, sexual, anything went sexually. And then when children were born, because of loose sexuality, they were offered as sacrifices in the flaming lap of the God called Baal. Baal was thought to be a son of the Canaanite god Dagon. Now, those of you who know your Bible know that Dagon was the god that the Philistines worshipped when they had captured the Ark of the Covenant in 1 Samuel. When the Ark of the Covenant was sent in the temple of Dagon, the Ark of the Covenant representing the presence of the true and the living God, Dagon fell on his face. They went in the next morning and that idol god was on its face in front of the Ark of our God. They propped him back up. How many know the other? If you don't have the real God, you got to prop him up. <laughs> and he fell over again, and his hands and his head were broken off. And so I wouldn't be much impressed with a God like that. When you know the story of Elijah, Elijah <clears throat> showed up when Israel was at its height of degradation, or depth, I should say. When Baal worship and uh, the Infanticide was at an all-time high. Uh, They were worshiping this evil so-called God. And how many know there's always a demon, a living demon behind every false religion and God ready to accept the worship? The Paul warns us in the last days men will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Sometimes the idol was made in the form of a horned bull symbolizing power and fertility. And so Israel would participate in these ungodly uh, so-called worship practices during the week of Baal, and then they would have the audacity to go to the temple on the Sabbath or the synagogue of the Sabbath and try to serve Yahweh too. But I, Elijah asked this question of him on Mount Carmel, how long halt ye between two opinions? If God be God, serve Him. If Baal be God, serve Him. Some of you are in this place this morning and you're halting between two opinions. Your own lifestyle which has gotten you nowhere, which has messed you up and has destroyed you or worship of the true and the living God. And I'm asking you, how long are you going to wonder when you're going to decide? Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you will hear His voice, harden not your hearts. You see, the prophets of Yahweh, the prophets of God, demanded righteousness and faithfulness and honesty, teaching that the Lord God is holy and He honors those who honor His Word. They preached a God who was all-powerful, holy and merciful and loving, but unchanging in His character. That's not what the prophets of Baal taught. Here's why they were so popular. The prophets of Baal mocked holiness and righteousness. They encouraged 
unrestricted fornication, adultery, prostitution, perversion, with an anything goes message. They thought fulfillment came through giving in to the sins of the flesh. I mean, that lie is prevalent in America today. Yes. Jeremiah dealt with it. He stood in the gates of the temple one day and he began to cry out against them. And he said in Jeremiah 5, if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between a man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, and you shed not innocent blood, say that with me, you shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt, then I will cause you to dwell in this place, in the land that I gave to your fathers forever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you've not known, and then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do these abominations? Oh, we're set free. It's a free country. God don't care how we live. So what if I slip off of somebody else's husband or wife? So what if I cheat a little? So what if I'm dishonest? So what if I watch that garbage when nobody knows I'm watching it? Nobody, it's nobody's business. God doesn't really care. Because you know what? We have God's grace. We're delivered to do these abominations. And this house, which is called by my name, Become a den of robbers. Oh, does that sound familiar to anyone? Jeremiah says to, in the temple, Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Do you all remember the cleansing of the temple? In the book of Matthew chapter 21, when he threw out the money changers and he reproved them for their idolatry, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer to all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Indicating Jeremiah. He said, well, Jer Jesus is quoting Jeremiah. Who do you think Jeremiah got his words from but the Lord? Amen. Amen. I say, Pastor, what does that have to do with us in America today? Keep in mind... That Jezebel was given to Ahab in a treaty to keep from having war between Sidon and Israel. She wasn't really loved by her father and she was manipulative, controlling, evil. But she feigned at times to be religious and would fast and pray only to lie and malign somebody else. We live in a dangerous age when some people can get away with murder and others are being chased and tormented. And, 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 and it's just amazing the unfairness of the justice system in America, even in Washington, D.C. It really is. God have mercy on us. <clears throat> would we worship Baal today? In September of 2016, an arch was unveiled in New York City. This arch is a replica of what ISIS destroyed in Phoenicia, and it is the actual entrance to the Temple of Baal erected in New York City in 2016. I'm telling you, it's symbolic and it's a warning. What are they saying now? Just this last week in New York, two bills were passed that endorses bail. One allows you to kill a baby up until the due date of its birth. And I'm not ever going to back down on any of these things. If you want to go to a church where they never rock a political boat, you go ahead and find you one somewhere else. I, this is not a Democrat or Republican thing. This is right and wrong. That's right. It is wrong to murder a child, born or unborn. Now, in the state of New York, you cannot give a convicted rapist murderer a lethal injection because they say that would be killing him. But you can rip an innocent baby apart, and if it's born alive, they can kill it. 
They also passed a law that made it illegal for counselors to advise minors against any LGBTQ lifestyle. It's against the law to tell a kid God has something better for you. I don't understand. And I'm, I'm going to be plain. If a Christian tells somebody involved in homosexuality or bisexuality they can change, they say, oh, you can't change. You can't change. Don't try to counsel them that way. But you can take an actual male, and they say they want to be a female, and they say, oh, we can change that. Can you change it or can't you change it? Something don't make sense here. It's sad. In New York, Bishop Edward Scheifenberger of Albany, New York, spoke vehemently against this. He warned Governor Como in a letter not to tackle this dark star and not to endorse this, but Governor Como and people cheered and applauded when this law was passed. Anybody see that? Is a child a child of 20 weeks? Watch this video and let it touch your heart. four weeks. Thirty weeks. Can you imagine? Jesus. Can we be silent? No. Surely Pastor Jezebel is just an Old Testament figure that isn't pertinent to the New Testament church. Turn with me to the book of Revelation. Verse chapter 2. Cody's, all, Cody's already quoted from this portion of Scripture. And unto the angel of the church at Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, whose eyes are like unto a flame of fire, his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and patience with thy works. And I know the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman, who? Jezebel, Jezebel which calleth herself a prophet, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed to idols. What was Jezebel's thing? Sexual promiscuity and idolatry. He's warning the same spirit is prevalent even in the church. And church folks are winking and saying it's all okay. I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. How many want to go in the rapture and not be around for the great tribulation? Anybody besides me? Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. God is warning that there is an element in the church that is still endorsing the teachings of Jezebel. And he says, I'm warning you about it now. You say, Pastor, all of us know better than that. It's time we cry loud and spare not. When you go back to where I was talking about Dagon, even the priests were using their ministry position to meet women to commit adultery. And we've got to have our churches purified. Jesus will begin His cleansing at the house of God. Judgment begins at the house of God. God sees and knows how we live. And it matters. It matters. I want you to hear this. I'm going to say this and you write it down. I pray that it never happens. But don't you be surprised if something worse than 9-11 doesn't hit New York City for this blatant murder of innocent children. This happened when Moses was born. In the book of Exodus, the king set out a decree. You let the wicked people go, but you murder the babies. 
This happened when Jesus was born. What did Herod declare? And God is raising up an army in this day and the same decree has gone out and the same spirit of Jezebel is prevalent. Folks, I'm telling you, I believe in women's rights, but I believe unborn women have rights too. In the state of New York, you can get in trouble for crushing an endangered turtle's eggs. You can get in trouble for touching an eagle's egg. But you can't get in trouble up to the very last due date of killing a human child. Partial birth abortion, I'm going to be blunt. They run a pair of shears into the base of the neck and up into the head and rip the brains apart and jerk them out while the child flinches and jerks in pain. Sometimes they're born alive and they kill them anyway and they sell their parts for high dollars. This is infanticide. And Christians need to say, enough is enough. Now hear, hear me. You may be in this building and have had an abortion in the past. God has grace and mercy for you. You saw, God said even Jezebel, I'd give her a chance to repent if she just would. God loves you. He's forgiven you. And you have a child waiting for you in heaven if you get right with God. Many times young people are advised that it's not a living human being. That it's just a blob of flesh. Ask our medical doctors here. Ask Dr. Smith. Is that a living human being? Look at an ultrasound and tell me it's not a living human being. And while parents are waiting in line for years for a child to adopt, we murder our future. Elijah does an amazing thing. Keep in mind that Baal is supposed to be the god of rain and wind and lightning and fertility. So Elijah steps into the throne room, brave fella of the king with guards everywhere. And he says, by my word, there'll be neither rain nor dew. And for three and a half years, Israel saw no rain or dew. And he showed himself to the king and said, let's meet on Mount Carmel. And let's build two altars. If Baal answers by fire, then he's God. And the priests of Baal built their altar first. And they screamed and they shouted and they danced. They climbed on the altar. They jumped on the altar. Oh, Baal, hear us. They cut themselves. And the prophet Elijah mocked them. Yell a little louder. You might need to wake him up. Maybe he's chasing somebody and can't catch him. And one translation of the Hebrew actually implies that maybe he's indisposed and can't hear you for the strain. Elijah mocked their false god. He loved people. But how many know that we have, listen to me, the world has said that the church does not believe in science. Folks, we have science on our side for what we believe. And according to biology, there's still only two genders. I don't care what they say. That's a fact. And, 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 and I look at creation. I look at the complexity of the human body. And, and, and people say, oh, it just happened over billions of years. Come on. I watch the Discovery Channel and they'll talk about evolution and then they'll talk about the intricate design of each species and each animal. And how can you have design without a designer? Amen. Truth of the matter is we don't want to believe that there's a God and we're going to have to stand before Him and give an account for how we live. Amen. It's the time of the evening sacrifice. Elijah didn't use Jezebel's altar. He built an altar with 12 stones in the name of the Lord. Put the bullock on the altar and covered it with 12 barrels of water. Boy, there's significance here. 12 tribes, 12 apostles. Are you hearing that? And he stepped back. And a very, I said this Wednesday night, he had a very long private prayer life, but a very short public prayer life. God, you're God in heaven. Show that I've done these things at your word. 
And the fire fell from heaven and not only consumed the sacrifice and the wood, but the stones and licked up the water and the dust. And all the people fell on their faces and shouted, The Lord, He is God! The Lord, He is God! Elijah slew the prophets of Baal and went out and went into intercessory prayer with his head between his knees, travailing before the Lord. And he kept sending his servant out and saying, Hey, is there a cloud in the sky? Is there a cloud in the sky? And the seventh time... The servant came back and he said, there's a cloud about like a man's hand. And Elijah said, tell old Ahab to get his chariot ready. For I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Folks, get your chariots ready. The eviler and the darker the night gets, the greater the anointing and presence of God is going to be manifested on His people. God is going to raise up a people who run under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That old hairy-legged prophet, wrapped, the Bible said he girded up his loins. That means he took that robe, tied it up around himself, and took off running. And under the power of God, outran the king's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. One day a chariot of fire separates Elijah and Elisha. He's been mentoring Elisha. And a whirlwind carries the prophet up into heaven. And the mantle falls on Elisha and he walks to the Jordan River and he smites the waters with the mantle of Elijah and he says, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And the waters parted. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? The great late Leonard Ravenhill said the question of America should be, where are the Elijahs of the Lord God? Did you hear that? Is there somebody here that believes in the real, true, living God that loves little children? Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in His sight. You will notice Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, was a racist. And they have made sure that Planned Parenthoods are always in minority areas. Last year in New York, there were more black babies aborted than born. Who's behind that? That is evil. At its utmost. There has been a bill similar to the one I talked about that was introduced along with this bill, which makes it illegal to counsel against the LGBTQ lifestyle. It's been introduced several times in Charleston, West Virginia, for a state law here. Be alert of what's happening. Know what's going on. Where are the Elijahs of the Lord God? Folks, we don't hate anybody. We don't hate transgenders. We don't hate those who struggle with homosexuality. We don't hate Islamists. We don't hate, we love. But the Bible says we have to love people enough to tell them the truth. Paul said, have I become your enemy because I've told you the truth. We don't have time for our petty little fussing over things that don't matter. Amen. It's a time we unite for the body as the body of Christ and say, America can come back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Lord Jesus Christ, or continue to serve Baal. Yes. Listen, stand with me as we listen to the closing words of the Old Testament. The last chapter, fourth chapter of Malachi, beginning with the first verse. Behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord. It shall need them neither root nor branch, but unto you that fear my name 
shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of a stall. Ye shall tread down the wicked, and they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet. In the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb for all of Israel with his statutes and judgments. Listen, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the hearts of fathers and mothers back to their children and the hearts of the children back to the fathers unless I come and smite the earth with a curse. I ask you, is that not more relevant than what you read in the paper yesterday? Lord, these are the days of Elijah. I'm not saying saying that, but wake up and realize somebody needs to stand and speak for the babies who cannot. Altars open. If God's dealing with your heart to take a stand, if you need to be saved, if you need to give your life or renew your covenant with God, somebody here will be glad to pray with you.